next episode of our peace talks series where we catch up with the bands that are coming to play for us in worcester at the mars bar and uh today we have uh mr cory dick who will be coming up on thursday uh hi cory and thanks for joining us today my joy thank you thanks for having me so it's uh it was a while back i think that we uh we first uh, arranged for you to come up um i know you've been a very busy man um and and uh you, you play a lot of instruments as well as I understand. Um, so yeah, can you tell us a little bit kind of how you got into how you got into music uh, from the start and then kind of how you settled on drums as your main instrument? Yeah, grand. I mean, I, I, um, I'd say I grew up in a musical household. My dad teaches piano. My mum's got an interesting ear, but thinks she's tone deaf, but she's not. She's totally not. Just being a mummy mum. And my younger brother played like double bass. Okay. We missed a trick there when he went off to to become a chef. Like we could have been, you know, the drum and bass pairing that everyone wants, but oh well. He had other callings. Um, yeah, my my school was pretty musical as well, so I got the chance to play viola, trumpet, guitar, mm-hmm. bass, this and that, and then um, yeah, I got decent at the trumpet. It's a pretty cool instrument. Um, but then, yeah, found the drums and I was like, wow, this is so instant. This is so like immediate. I hit the thing. It makes a sound. I mm-hmm. hit a slightly different, it makes a slightly different sound, you know? Um, so yeah, fast forward and I, w- I wouldn't really call myself a multi-instrumentalist, like live, I'll occasionally sing a song or bvs he'll sing back and vocals happily but live i i think i'm a drummer pseudo percussionist but mostly drum kit player right um at this point but it's informed by all sorts of things like i'll um yeah i'm coming at the drums from a bunch of different angles but that's that's inherent in the instrument the instrument came from different continents yeah i because I was looking at your, your just kind of some of the uh, uh, styles and such that you've uh, you studied. Um, do you want to go into that? Because some of the African drumming and, and such like that. Yeah, sure. I spent a little bit of time in in Ghana studying uh, pan logo drums. You live at my parents' house now. Tragic. Ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So that that was like having come from. British school system that was a completely different way of learning just sitting on the beach with <laughs> a master like playing a thing I'd play it back um and yeah by the end of that time like if I was having a lesson a bunch of kids would come and dance on the beach some like people would come and play other parts of the percussion ensemble just for my lesson it's really kind oh wow um um yeah on top of that like i'm i'm i quite like folk music of the world i guess yes um music where an entire community culture has come together and agreed oh this set of ingredients feels great Mm -hmm. you know over a long time you know not that things don't evolve but like there was a time when things evolved a bit slower when we couldn't have this interview like this and we, we would have had to schedule it over like three years (laughs) <laughs> I, mean, I could get my horse up to you. <laughs> um, so yeah, a lot, a lot of my playing is informed by music that I think has that kind of weight of tradition and things. But then, you know, I'm a I'm a '90s kid, so of course right. I'm going to talk about it and like see how 
glitching things up can affect something with power but still be you know modern and yeah so you you mentioned um uh trumpet was uh something you you, you played and i know you've done a lot of work with laura jurd um uh, dinosaur wasn't it the uh the band you're in with her yeah absolutely um yeah a lot lot of her albums you'll find my noodling on or my sick grooves sick beats whatever you like excellent um, yeah she's total partner in crime right there i've got her electric bass just out of shot oh, okay. <laughs> we did a session in my studio um a couple of days ago yeah she's i mean she's one of a kind our laura mm. what a treat. to like come from glasgow where there's a few trumpet players and then arrive in london and all of a sudden like you've got people who are amazing at the trumpet but like all sound totally different and right that, yeah that was a total game changer um you know glasgow's an entirely different city now though but an incredible scene like i kind of wish i was growing up in glasgow now instead of back then um, okay that said why is that like there were a handful of people who were totally inspiring for me J just the scene in glasgow right now is like really vital there's people like really investing in the city making it happen mostly like grassroots musicians creating the scene for themselves um and yeah just like all these bands with killer identities it's so okay wicked yeah great music coming out of glasgow That's cool what I we'll search yeah yeah i need, need to head up there i haven't uh I haven't, I haven't i haven't spent too much time in uh in and around scotland um but so I, and, and in my previous career i did well, I, I was working quite a bit out there but yeah yeah we, we did a bit of a tour earlier in august with my wife but um right. yeah I need to check out the scene in glasgow then. um so yeah any other any other sort of uh, uh artists or, or collaborations that you you're, you're currently working on or, or any that you yeah, you particularly enjoy working with absolutely i got got a project i'm particularly excited about at the moment called norman and corey where duo of Norman Wilmore, a saxophonist from Shetland who's living in Glasgow um, and he's playing a set of like midi organ foot pedals and making them behave in a bunch of different ways. Oh, okay. Um, and I'm at the moment playing drums but we're looking to like expand that to triggers like yeah things to make the drums behave in a different way as well but what what we're working on at the moment is um, traditional music from our shared heritage, essentially, like music from Shetland, Scotland. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, maybe the occasional Irish, Scandinavian tune. Um, so playing these ancient melodies, but like twisting them, because it, it's kind of like a contemporary folk band but we're obviously a couple of guys with jazz degrees like we, we've got a different skill set to that so it's going to come out different right mm. probably still jazz i once tried to make an indie band and it was definitely still jazz <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah norman and corey we're we're um gonna do a lot of stuff in 2024 excellent oh, i look yeah. forward to that eh? yeah at the moment, if you want to hear anything of ours, we're only on Instagram, Norman okay. and Corey. Um, uh, I'll put that up on the uh, on the titles there. Eh? <laughs> cool. Sweet. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So on to the the uh, the Sun Swells album, which I think that was a uh, release last year, wasn't it? Yeah. Um. So that's that's your second album, is that correct? There we go. Yeah. Got, got a on copy the... of it there on vinyl. Bring bring some mm -hmm. along on Thursday. Make sure you got some there. Yeah, cool. We'll uh, we'll get get some of those shifty for you. Um, yeah, so talk us through that that project and kind of what you what you set out to do do with that set out. Yeah, to grand. Yeah, this has been a long process. Like started writing the music probably twenty nineteen, and um, yeah, what I was trying to do. Oh, geez, I'm in such a different headspace now. What I was trying to do was like. <laughs> <clears throat> write, write music that's for a large ensemble but without really being prescriptive so it can feel like agile 
and have lots of sections that are kind of open and jammy, but not in that London jazz explosion kind of way, something a bit more twisted. Um, it's like we're, yeah, you look at the lineup for the band and we're not like versed in Afrobeat, etc. cetera, <laughs> um, hip hop. We're versed in like folk. Yeah. European jazz, some kind of like rockier elements. So I guess the music is quite, quite a large band, three vocalists that guess on different tracks and then a seven piece, eight piece apart from that. Um, but the core of it, I'd say, is this trio of myself on drums, Rob Luft on guitar, Tom McCready on bass. There's a lot going on, but that's like the, that's the heart um, for the most part. And yeah, tried to make it kind of this crunchy, rocky thing. My previous album was folky with kind of piano, organ, drums at the center. Yeah. A large ensemble. And yeah, this one's crunchy and spontaneous and like a bit, um, I don't want to say piss taking, a bit like um, mercurial. Okay. Yeah. Like saying, oh yeah, so the obvious thing would be to do this trope here, but like why? Why? Yeah. Trying to like question certain assumptions of like head, solo head, this style of playing. Yeah, like there's lots of structural tropes going on these days other than head, solo's head, but yeah, what is a solo was, was one kind of question I came into this with. We've got some feature solos, but can we as an ensemble like solo can we as an ensemble comp each other support yeah 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 just be this kind of moving organism but it has a kind of soloistic element to the same yeah you know? they're sort of improvising together rather than sort of just focusing on one yeah but the, uh, like fundamentally though it's not a very abstract album it's like there are melodies there there's lyrics and yes yeah it's very very melodic somewhere yeah poems. yeah so I'm I'm not here to like freak people out. Like I'm 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 into freaky music, but the kind of music I'm into making certainly at the moment is like look at this obvious beautiful thing, but like there's a little gnarly little gremlin over here. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Brilliant, love it. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> Sounds great. And and so yeah, as you as you've been um sort of touring and and, and playing the live gigs, I know the lineup sort of uh uh, changes. You've had some fantastic guests on um, in in uh, some of the gigs there. So yeah, can you tell us about the the band that you're bringing up on Thursday? Who who have we got coming up? Yeah, Grant. Uh, well, I got a couple have been doing a lot of the um, a lot of the gigs. So uh, Rebecca Edlund, the Swedish vocalist, and Caius Williams, who's just graduated from Trinity on electric bass. He's yeah, he's making moves. He's got a lot going on. Um, on top of that, James Kitchman on guitar. I've been playing with him for about a decade now in a band called uh, Glasshopper, led by okay. a Glaswegian saxophonist called Johnny Chung, who was incidentally my best man at my wedding. Ah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, and then on top of that, there's Joe Wright, who's actually on the album on saxophone. The, the others aren't. <laughs> um, but that's, yeah, that's not... A reflection of those guys that I haven't booked. That's just because it's really fun. Yeah, trying it different lineups. Um, and yeah, super special guest. It's it's amazing to have Hugh Warren. Mm. Uh, yes, for a second gig with us. Um, yeah, that's gonna be yeah, that's gonna be great because he's one of a kind. He's very how special. long have you known? How long have you known or worked with Hugh? Um. Oh, geez. Well. Yeah, maybe, maybe about 10 years now since moving to England, just like the scene being quite broad and then Wales being right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And since then, I've been on the like marking panel at Royal Welsh with him for the, the jazz exams, which is a very strange gig to have, swanning in twice a year and judging everyone. <laughs> which isn't really my MO. <laughs> but you know what a privilege to be a part of anyone's education yeah indeed yeah, but Hugh's 
very very special to be honest so that's going to be it's going to be rowdy look really looking forward to it so it's a uh, six or was that six feet yeah I mean, okay certainly is perfect well great i'll uh i'll let i'll let you get back on with your day uh thanks very much for uh taking some time for us uh with us today and uh really looking forward to uh welcoming you to the mars bar for the first time uh hopefully it won't be the last and uh yeah we'll see you on thursday grand thanks so much <laughs>